Hey, how's it going guys? It's White Bread, and today we are going to watch uh, some Lad Bible. This dude was a London, London gangster, and, uh, and we're going to be watching him tell his story of his experience as a London gangster. People said called me a gangster. I didn't like it. One guy called me a gangster, so I stuck a gun in his mouth and educated him that I weren't a gangster. And uh, I said, look, I'm a businessman and my business is crime. <laughs> I'm a businessman and my business is crime. I do crime. That's my business. I'm not a gangster. You calling me a gangster? Huh? You calling me a gangster? I'm not a gangster. I'm not a fucking gangster. I'm, I'm, I'm not a gangster. I'm not a gangster. All right. I'm a businessman. Here's my business card. Call me if you need me. Look at how dressed he is. He's so snazzy. I wonder how long he's been in jail. <laughs> my family was all straight goers. I was the one who corrupted them all because they'd never seen so much money as I was earning. So they was all straight goers. My dad was a builder. My mum was a stay-at-home mum, like she had eight kids. I was the baby, so I got spoiled. I was walking through a park, a couple of my old school friends, one of them let off a starting pistol, so the two coppers come in. And I, they started getting heavy with them, and I went, oh, you can't do that. I said, you've got to have a responsible adult prop, you know, there. He went, what, are you a lawyer? I said, no, but I know my rights. And Damn. he went, okay, walked out. They come back, threw a razor on the floor, cutthroat. <sighs> and um, he went, we're nicking you, but that come out your pocket. I went, what are you talking about? So they nicked me, took me to Stoke New England. He said, they said, if you plead guilty, it'll be a 10 bob fine. If you don't plead guilty and you go up the steps, he said, you're going to get a ball sword out. So I've done guilty. When I've gone back to, to work, of course, they've read it in the newspaper. I lost my job. I, I don't know. I can't really understand English accents. But uh, what I think he said, what I, this is what I think he said, is that uh, he basically learned from other kids, right? And and those kids pretty much like made him into, you know, the person that he was as a gangster. I, were, did the family like join, you know, the gangster life that this dude was? What opened up to me, I thought, if you're going to make me a bad guy, I'll show you how bad I can be. So I'd go out and bash them up, because they took a liberty anyway, you know, they tried <laughs> to rob the geese, they turned him over. So I didn't mind tuning them up. And I got my bit of money, and then I thought about it, I thought, I'm taking all the risk, and you're earning all the dough. <laughs> and I don't need you. I now know how it works. He basically robbed the dude of 500, 500 pounds. That was his thing was you know beating people up and robbing their money 12 pounds is very very little money in today's society but back then that was, that was you know that was i'm pretty sure that was good money you know <laughs> we went up the old bailey and i've got a senior detention center for six months very brutal places in them days you know they they it would be done there for child abuse you know and but and i see right. them beating kids up and i've oh shit out of anger in me. and um when I come out, my dad was waiting, bless him. He went, no more guns and all that. I went, no, no, no. I said, leave it to me. And when I got out, I put my own firm together then. Damn. And uh, they were all hungry, they all had criminals. For already what he has done, being 16 and 17, it's it's really nice to hear that, you know, he's actually had a dad who's, who actually cared for him because then then if he didn't then his dad wouldn't be going to going to see him and and telling him like you got to stop dude you got to stop you know because i feel like i feel like most most parents you know once they witness that they they just completely disown their child that that's what i think they just used to call us the, the chaps you know the, the chaps, chaps. <laughs> and uh, i always dress nice and i'll come out and i thought to myself right there's business to be done here so I noticed that there was a lot of like Chinese Indian shops opened up. So I had the bricks put through their window on the, for two times. Then I went into them and I said, look, we can stop this happening for you, you know? It's not nice. I said, people sitting down here right, trying to have a Chinese or an Indian and a brick comes through and it's from side, yeah, they ain't gonna come back. But we can stop it happening for you, yeah? And if you get a problem, you can phone us and I'll come and sort the problem. And oh God! I really had the reputation then for Cavendish. They're they're basically making business by forcing people. That is the 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 weirdest but most effective way to you know to to do things. It's to scare someone, right? To scare someone and to make them bend the knee to you, right? This guy's a crazy old spot. Am I right? We had a mm -hmm. bit of gang warfare. 
Oh. Uh, all the little ferns, because there weren't enough money for all of us, you know, so I wanted it all for us. The cake weren't big enough to, why well, have a little slice when you can have a big slice, you know? It's, it was just business sense. I didn't hate them, I didn't dislike them. You know, good luck to them, but don't step on my toes, you know, because I want it all. <laughs> He's like, I didn't, I, I didn't dislike them, I didn't hate them, but, you know, if you step on my toes, I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to freaking end you, dog. You see this? You see this? Uh, I will cut you. I will cut you with the key. I will cut your throat with the key. Do you want that to happen? No? Okay, then. Well, they did, and I fired guns at them, and then they really Yeah, see, the so freaking really, really shot really at cool. them. But it got to bad, really bad stage. You know, I got, I got done for a bank robbery. I got a not guilty on that. But then I think the police targeted me. They knew I was bang at it. They used to come in the pub and I'd be sitting there, because in them days I didn't drink. I drank a bit of lemon, you know? Um, and they used to walk in and go, hello, Mr. Cummings. So I used to go, hello, because, you know, being polite. Mm -hmm. And they used to say, we'll get you. We're watching you. We're going to get you. We're going to put you away for 30 years, because this was about the time that the craze and the Richardsons was going away for 30 years. Wasn't it? The craze, the English criminals in the east end of London. In the, They were probably, okay, so I'm guessing the craze and the Richardsons are like really popular gangsters. And because they're that, and because they're so popular, that smaller gangsters are put into the light because of them. Like so. train robbers. So they're talking big numbers now. Where before you, you used to get five or the six. The torture gang, yeah. holy cow! But now you're talking double figures, which is serious bit of work, you know. It got to a stage where it become ridiculous. Like if someone got cut or or shot, it was Bobby Cummings that firm done it. If they caught a cold, it would be me who give it to them. If there was a car accident, I arranged it. You know, it got really ridiculous. I'm sitting in the pub, uh, all my pals having a drink because they were drunk. And Tony's Greek come in to me. He said, do you know the fish and chip shop where your mum and dad goes? I went, yeah. He said, well, they're in bits. He said, like, a couple of Turkish guys got their daughter on heroin and trying to get her out on the gun. And I went, do what? He said, yeah. And I know this family, there are working people. Oh, you know, okay, never mind, never mind. Dinner time, working through the night time, you know? Okay, it's not It's not his family, it's a different family, and he has respect for this family, and because he has respect for this family, he doesn't want to see, uh, he doesn't want to see this family go through this pain that that uh, the, the, the Turkish people are putting him through. Covered in grease, and they're nice people. He said, and they know about you, they've heard about you, and they want to talk to you, make it go away. I said, okay. So I got him to see him, and he had this biscuit tin, bless him. And he opened up the biscuit tin, he had rolls of notes in it. He said, Bobby, he said, you know, he's crying, his wife's crying, and I felt bad, you know? And he said, you know, these people, terrible people, you know, tell me what they'd... He said, and we don't want the problem, we work people. He said, we, you know... I said, don't worry, I'll make it go away. So he gave me the biscuit tin, and it was their savings. Oh, I don't take money off of them. I'm going to nick it off the people who really got it. This that's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So he he didn't want to take the money off of the family that was doing good because it's not their fault. It's they're not the ones who are who are who are doing any trouble, right? It's the Turkish people that are doing any trouble, and he would rather take money off of off of the people that are giving other people trouble than the people who are doing good for society you know what though that that is that's respectable but in a in a very criminal evil way you know so i said no i said what you do if we come in here we get fish and chips free and if my mum and dad come up here you give them their fish and chips free okay i said and that's the price he went no take them i went no i don't want your money He's basically like, okay, if I save your daughter, you give us fish and chips for free, and and and, and you give my family fish and chips for free. <laughs> your your daughter matters more than than your restaurant, I would assume, right? And Frank was sitting in a motor. He was my driver, old Frank. He went, "What's going on?" I said, "Tomorrow." I said, "At seven o'clock in the morning." I said, "Bring the car around." So he said, "What are we going to do?" I said, "We're well, going to get Kennedy." That was my sawn-off shotgun. It was named after President Kennedy because my birthday's twenty third November. Oh, and got shot on the twenty second, so I named the gun Kennedy. Oh, okay, that's pretty cool. That's pretty. That's pretty neat. So, okay, that's why. That's why he named he named the gun Kennedy is because there was a resemblance in the death and his birthday. Calling a, a your sawed off shotgun Churchill sounds a lot more badass than Kennedy. I said, and I want one chamber, one buckshot filled with rock salt, and you have a one with the normal buckshot in. All right. Yeah, I'm not messing about with these people. They're dangerous. I'm going to shoot them. So I got out the motor, 
got the saw on off, one's under the car, I walked in and I shot him through the leg with a rock salt. Oh, screaming. shit. But rock salt was good because it melted away and left no forensic. You know, when the right. blood it, it melted away. That's why I used it. I walked straight into the office, I threw my coat back, pulled out the saw on off, and I went, I'll blow your f***ing head off. I went, how about that? I said, if you ain't off the manor in 24 hours, I'm going to blow your brains out. So he he basically, he, he knew what he was doing, right? Uh, shot shot the one guy that that really didn't mean much right with with the rock salt so he's not he's not gonna be hurt all that much even though he is and then the other bullet he saved for the actual for the actual dude that that was in charge of it and went up to him said I'll blow your fucking brains out that is that that is that is crazy that's like <laughs> that is like some godfather type of shit right there man that is some godfather type of shit right there you know what man i'm kind of i kind of want to watch godfather right now <laughs> i kind of want to watch godfather after this well i weren't shooting in my head right because they used to say how they do it so you don't feel bad about it they say we've got a rat so the, the humanize them they're not a person anymore they're a rat so what i'm shooting is vermin so i had no problem with that and uh, they were doing bad things to people, you know, terrible things. And so they knew the name of the game when they was doing it, so they knew the rules. If you started thinking when you're going to shoot someone, you start thinking about wives, kids, grandmothers and all that, you couldn't do it. So you've got to dehumanise them right. so that they're just an object to be targeted and you target them and you do it. It would be hard to kill someone, you know. It, it definitely would be. It, it, another human being, right? And he says, well, you know, just call them call them call them a, a rat you know dehumanize them imagine that they're not human if you bring up in your mind like they might have a family they might have kids right you're just gonna hesitate and and not shoot you have to do you know inhumane things uh very devil like things just to uh, complete your objective because if you you live with that you become hardened and that's why it's very hard for you to show love and emotion that sort of thing, because you've got to bring the shutters down. Because if right. you don't, you go insane. Or you put one in your own mouth, you know? There's four, pe four pe three people you can't do in this world, yeah? You can never do if you're a villain. And that's a straight goer, yeah? It's the media and old Bill. You've got to be a lunatic if you shoot old Bill. <laughs> they're never going to give up on you. You shoot the media, it's all over the papers, and you're not going to earn no money. It's not profitable. It didn't matter whether I liked you or didn't like you. If someone said to me, there's X amount of pounds, we're not shot in the leg. I'm going to look at it and think, right, if I shoot him, I get caught, I'm going to do this much jail. If I'm clever and I don't get caught, that's my money if I shoot him. You're watching people around you, you're totally paranoid because you don't know if someone's going to pick up the phone and grass you up to the old bill. So you're watching your own type of people. Okay, what the hell is old bill? Is that like an old man, like an old man or woman, like old people? Or like a boss? Is that what it is? I don't know. <laughs> That's the only thing I've got on my conscience that I have to live with. That is the hardest thing I have to live with. Someone choked on a gag on a, on a bit of work, you know, and and they choked on the vomit. And Do you want to explain what it is? It's a bad place for me, you know. Like we've done a hundred times. You tie them up, you gag them, yeah. You go, the police come, untie them, boom. You make sure you've got your smother on so no one knows who you are. You know, you, I used to wear a crash helmet, blacked out visor. And so no one knows who you are. If I could undo that one, just that one, that would be the only thing in my life I would undo. Hold on a second, but he's done that multiple times already. So why does one person matter? It should never have happened, you know? If I'd have shot him or something like that, it, yeah, but you know, on a gag and they choke on their vomit. I mean, oh, it wasn't yeah. a nice thing. And I you tor you, you basically tortured the person to death. He makes sense, right? Just, just shoot the guy and that's it but to torture him like that hell no <laughs> no 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 but when i go to church because i'm catholic i believe in in that sort of thing i always light a candle for that person like i do my mum and dad and my daughter who died you know i light candles for them so you were sent to prison for manslaughter yeah when you were there what was prison like it was, a, and it, it was a university of crime. You learned other people. Like if I wanted, I now had the connections. If I wanted a dodgy passport, I know someone who's doing dodgy passports. If I wanted, you know, a dodgy checkbook account, got people to arrange that. If I wanted a deal in drugs, I'm meeting some of the best drug dealers and smugglers in the country. If I wanted to make bombs, I'm talking to the IRA and people like that. And you know, there was in Parker. Shit, there was bit, <laughs> that's crazy. Like, <laughs> the most dangerous cutout men in the, in the country. There, I was in there. You know, 
It was almost oh, like Britain had their own Alcatraz. So basically, prisons for them back in the day were more like hubs to talk to people and you know try and get some communications. Uh, that, that's that's pretty that's pretty crazy. And then he was in what would be Britain's Alcatraz, which is pretty fucking scary, you know, because you got the most popular crime lords, right? Was it hard um, saying goodbye to your criminal past and going straight? Well, my wife had my daughter, was pregnant with my daughter, and I made a rule um, that my daughter would never sit on the other side of the prison table. I'd never let her experience prison. Okay. I lived a quiet life, you know. I didn't go back to London. I went to live in Kent, you know. <clears throat> and I saw the beauty of things. When you're locked up, like, you go out, you walk through a park. You're on your way to work. You're walking through a park. You don't see what's happening in that park. But to me, I'd stop, I'd look at squirrels, I'd look at trees. I used to sometimes do really weird things like take my shoes and socks off and actually walk on damp grass, you know, just to feel what... Because I didn't have them experience. I was in concrete tomb. I was buried alive in a concrete tomb for years. Having his own family changed his view of how he wants his life to be because it's... It's understandable. If you're at the right mind, you wouldn't want your child to, to look at you or to even walk into a prison, you know, and look at you dressed in a, in, in a prison outfit, right? Wearing it is already branding you like you're a bad person. His redemption arc was having a freaking child. <laughs> and I'm going to schools, de-glamorize crime. I'm going to prisons and talk to prisoners and de-glamorize. I say, this is what's going to happen to you. And I can get away with that because they know I'm doing it, for, I'm talking from experience because I've done it. And you don't get any worse than killing people, you know, so people take you very serious. They don't want to upset you anyway because they don't know if you if you still do it on them. So really he's he, he's grown from his past and he's he's going to schools, you know, prisons, you know, he's trying to teach people to, you know, not have a dangerous life because you don't want that you don't want to die you don't want to die you don't want to kill people because killing killing someone i feel like it would be the most inhumane thing to do on this planet is is killing another person uh i'm glad that you know he's doing this instead uh other than you know still doing crime and you know, honestly i feel like how badass this dude is he'd be like the world's biggest crime lord ever <laughs> would you have ever thought Oh, no, that, really? that never entered my head. I did what I did because I believed in what I was doing. I didn't want a, another kid having the life I have. I'd like him to have the life I've got now. It's very nice, thank you. So I had this letter and it said, you know, we want Buckingham Palace, one that you've been honoured with on the Queen's on the list. So of course I'm going to accept it. I said, of course. <laughs> I go there and you go through this side entrance. And as I'm walking up to the front of Buckingham, well, we're pulled up in the car, as we get out of the car, Buckingham Palace, I'm looking at Buckingham Palace, and it, my head flicked back to when I was a kid, and my dad used to go and take me to watch Changing the Guards and that. And he said to me one day, he said, seeing them people there, I went, yeah, he went, they're the toffs, right? He said, when you're going through that door, that's when you know you made it. And that day I walked through that door, I thought, I wish he was alive now to see me walk through the door, because all they'd seen me was as a villain. They didn't yeah. see me as a straight girl because they were died. I tell you what, I don't fear no one. I don't fear nothing, I don't fear no one. But I stood in front of her and it, it was a really weird feeling. It's like your mum standing there, you've been a naughty boy, you know. What did she say to you? She said to me, you've got a very... Because everyone asked me that, what did she say? And she said, I must say, I've never met someone like you. You've got a very colourful background. Well, I thought that was the poshest word to someone saying to me, cool, you've got a lot of form, you know what I mean? Looking <laughs> at it. He wasn't scared of anyone. He wasn't scared of no one. He wasn't scared of who walked next to him, right? But when he saw when he saw the queen and when he was standing right next to her, next to her, right? That that was it. It's like standing next to your mother, right? He met the queen. That's pretty cool. Getting your ODE must have been a really proud moment. What advice would you give to your younger self? Forget religion. Forget color. Forget sex. Balls down to win life. Two things. Are you a good person or a bad person? That's all it boils down to. Do you ever miss the old life? So I had to I go like through that. hell. I like that message. Right? To appreciate heaven. And th that's what it is. You have to see ugliness to appreciate beauty. You have to w witness hatred and venom 
to appreciate love and kindness. That's crazy, dude. That that is that is, that's that's pretty crazy. His life, everything that that he's done, just 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 to be to, you know, where he's at now. I I, I truly like that message message, and I feel like that message should be implemented into today's society. Right? It doesn't matter about what color you are. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you look like. What you do. Right? All it comes down to is. Are you good or are you bad, right? At the end of the day, once we die, we won't be in our bodies anymore. It's just our bodies that characterize us, right? We we can have the same exact personality, but in a different body, right? I think, uh, I think I'd like to end the video off right there. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, please make sure to like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. Hope you guys are doing great. I know I am. And as always, peace. Adios.